So when you go around and you start um, observing uh, conversations, team meetings, how people talk, the first thing that really strikes you is they all tend to talk the same. They all kind of operate in the same conversational mode. For example, one team, everyone is kind of trying to be really polite to each other to please the boss. In another organization, kind of, you have another team meeting and there maybe everyone is uh, engaging with each other in a fierce debate. And then there's a third kind of team that you see in another organization. And in that meeting, everyone is trying to uh, engage with each other kind of in a dialogic, kind of reflective, more reflective conversation mode. But what you see is usually all members in a team talk the same. All members in a meeting talk the same. It's not like you know, one person is being polite, the next person is debating, the third person is dialoguing. No. We have these patterns. We enact our conversational actions out of something that happens between us. Kind of, and that, you know, that something, that's what I refer to as field. It's a pattern of interaction. And um, do we see these field patterns shifting very often? No. Does it happen? Yes, it can happen. If it does happen, we usually all notice it, and it usually affects everyone in the team to shift from one mode of operating to another one. So that's my first observation, which is conversation happen in fields. And the second observation is, that there's only a very finite number of generic fields. Yes, it's true, every conversation is different, but when you really listen to the deeper generic field patterns, there's only a very limited number of them. In fact, I believe I have only seen four of them. The first field of conversation is called downloading or talking nice. What it really means is that we are speaking from what they or what others want to hear. So we engage in polite phrases, polite conversational routines, and we are basically conforming with what other people want us to, to say. We are not necessarily articulating what we really think, but we fit in, we conform with what others want us to say. And that style of conversation is what um, in schools we call learning. So we learn uh, to articulate what teachers want us to, uh, to, uh, to bring across. Or um, in organizations, um, you know, we call good communication, giving positive feedback, kind of articulating kind of what um, uh, the bosses want to hear. And probably none of us in this kind of global community of change makers that comes together here in this U lab would be in this place if we couldn't at least to some degree deliver on this um, field of conversation. So if it serves us as individuals, what's the big problem with it? Well, the problem is that from an organization learning point of view, it is absolutely dysfunctional because it disables us as a team to talk about the real issues that we face as a team, as an organization, as a community. And that actually brings us to uh, the second field of conversation, something that we call debate or talking tough, and something that essentially is based on speaking from what I think rather than from what they want me to say. Um, so different behavioral aspects here are um, that, you know, people, uh, you know, bring in their own point of view. So the entry ticket to a conversation is not that I'm conforming with my boss and then I'm saying that, that's level one. Level two is, my entry ticket is that I have a different point of view, something that differs from what the person before me or all speakers before me articulated and brought into the conversation. That is kind of what gives me legitimacy to articulate kind of the point of view that I want to bring in. While it's a great thing to have like, so they're great um, 
progress, you could say, with this style of conversation uh, is that we bring all the different viewpoints that exist in a team, in a social situation, in a community, that we bring them onto the table. That being said, the limitation of this style of conversation is that people cannot get beyond their point of view. If you, know, you think, if you kind of imagine kind of the viewpoint is like a jacket. So uh, in this debate style of conversation, the way I feel is I am my jacket. If you going to attack or to criticize my viewpoint, you're criticizing me, you're attacking me. And that's exactly how I'm going to respond to you, uh, which is I will be defensive. I will defend my viewpoint and I will argue why you're wrong and uh, why my perspective is the better one, which leads us to the third level of conversation, reflective dialogue, a dialogue or reflective uh, inquiry. And the essence of this kind of third field of conversation is that I am beginning to speak from seeing myself as part of the whole. Remember the astronaut movie that we uh, showed last week, um, going out, uh, for the moon, for the stars, and then turning around the camera and beginning to see planet Earth and planet itself. This kind of reflective turn, kind of bending the beam of observation and becoming aware of that I am part of the larger system. The system is not just something out there. I am part of the system and I am part of co-creating the system, co-enacting the system. That's this move. So when we talk about uh, dialogue and reflective inquiry, it is the capacity of a system to see itself. That's kind of, it's kind of the turning around of the camera. And that results in speaking from seeing myself as part of the whole. That's exactly what we mean with that. So what does that, what behavioral pattern do you see in a conversation? Something very simple, this that you see the conversational behavior moving from defensive routines, from defending my viewpoint, to inquiring into the uh, viewpoints of others. So what does that mean? It means people ask real questions of each other. So in a debate style of conversation, I am, if you differ from my viewpoint, I'm fiercely going to defend my viewpoint and tell you why I am right and you are not. Uh, while in a dialogue, you and I still have the same difference in viewpoints. Um, that's not different. But what is different is that in a level two conversation, I try to convince you why you are wrong and why uh, you know, I try to defend my point of view against you. In a level three conversation, a reflective dialogue, I'm beginning to ask genuine questions. What makes you think differently? Why is it? So what are the experiences? What are the um, foundations based on which you come up with a viewpoint that's so different or slightly different to uh, uh, my own conclusion? So that criteria, whether or not people ask genuine questions of each other or questions of each other at all, not rhetorical questions, but real questions, that's a very good indicator whether you are operating on level three, reflective dialogue, or on level two, which is a debate style of um, uh, conversation. So let me sum up, moving from level two to level three, moving from debate to dialogue, means moving from I am my jacket to uh, I have a jacket. And if I have a jacket, it means I can take it off and I can hang it someplace, and I can suspend my assumptions, the assumptions of my viewpoint, and I can look at it from outside because I have a point of view. It's not I am my viewpoint. And then I have the freedom to move around and look at the situation that we are facing from another stakeholder's perspective. And then to move on and again kind of to move around the problem and look from all the different angles of the other stakeholders and appreciate how it looks different uh, uh, from 
their viewpoint and from their experience. And then in the end, I come back and I return to my own perspective, to my own jacket. But I am, uh, and now my decisions are informed by the broadening and deepening of the perspectives and by the awareness of the impact that my decisions have on the experience of all the other stakeholders. In my view, 50% of change management is just about that shift. That shift from, I am my jacket, to I have a jacket. The shift from debate to dialogue. And it matters a lot because it's a shift of one type of conversation where when we face problems, I blame the others around me, other organizations, other stakeholders, other departments, to another way of viewing it where I begin to see the system as um, a constellation of variables that includes myself. I am part of the system and I see how I contribute to both the problems that we face today, but also to the solutions that we could create tomorrow. And that shift essentially is a shift of mindset that is at the heart of all change management and cultural change in bigger systems today.